पंडिता रमाबाई लाइफ इज ए वेरी वेरी रेयर काइंड शी फेस्ड मेनी पर्सनल ट्रेजिडीज एंड वाइल फेसिंग पर्सनल ट्रेजिडीज शी टुक मेनी बोल्ड डिसीजन्स and many unpopular decisions decisions uh going through her life uh, we really wonder whether a life like this is 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 real and uh, is it possible did something did somebody like her really exist and uh, it also raises a question if it is such a rare life uh, why is it that uh, she is not popular even now uh, i got to know her only few days ago Uh, when i was reading uh, something about uh, tilak tilak it is said that tilak some said something about rama bai and then uh, i came to know there was a character like rama bai and then i started reading and uh, after i started reading uh, i just couldn't do anything other than reading her and completing the whatever the contents i knew whatever the contents i had so uh extremely rare life okay <clears throat> uh rama bai lived during this period <clears throat> and her childhood is very unusual uh she she child lived the life of a brahmin pilgrim and traveled india with her parents and two of her older siblings uh, what she used to do was see she, she and her parents uh, like a family mm they used to go from one place to another they used to go from one place to another and what do they do for living they read or sing scriptures so they read and sing scriptures uh, near temples and like this they move from one place to another so this is the kind of experience that uh, uh, rama bai had and her father was chitpavan brahmin <coughs> and a marathi and he was a a reformist or a liberal thinker he wanted to educate his wife and for that he faced opposition from conservative brahmins uh debates were held whether a woman was uh, whether woman could learn sanskrit and he won the debate but 
that did not uh, make him closer to the people so he decided to move to a forest and start an ashram for boys okay there he educated uh, his wife and also his daughter ramabai in sanskrit texts so uh, rama boy uh, boy was uh, added later uh, rama was became an expert in sanskrit texts and some dharma sutras and certain literature um, but one personal tragedy took place in the famine of 1876-78 she lost three of her family members within a span of few months her sister her father and her mother okay uh, mother in the end she her and her elder brother with the help of two villagers had to carry her mother's body okay when she was just uh, Uh, 16 years old one recurring thing in her life is deaths of the nearby so three people died and then after that along with her brother she traveled throughout india reaching calcutta just like the way she used to do with her parents reciting singing the scriptures near the temples and moving from one temple to another temple so you can take it is almost like uh, begging and uh, but her knowledge her impressed her impressed people and her fame spread to calcutta where she was invited to speak before few learned pundits and uh, that girl impressed them and she was given the title pandita and saraswati <coughs> okay so that is how she became pandita from abai and now now in calcutta uh, she came in touch with brahmo samaj people brahmo samaj people uh, brahmo samaj was a was a reformist society and uh, there she came across with uh, many ideas um uh, they encouraged her because they were also interested in uh, women's education so they were happy to find somebody like rama bai and it is here keshav chandra sen suggested her to read vedas and upanishads okay she started reading but then meanwhile her brother died in 1880 is one tragedy fourth tragedy and uh, she married his friend an active member of brahma samaj he was from a sudra caste which means it is an inter caste and inter regional marriage surely there was no support from his parents but tragically that man died within 19 months fifth death but leaving her with a daughter 
so at 23 she became a widow and a single mother okay very tragic life and there was no family support so in that sense an orphan so because her husband also was no more she wanted to go back to pune her native place but one thing happened with her brahmo samaj experience uh what brahmo samaj leaders expected was that um, she would uh, say that uh, scriptures don't oppose female education and the scriptures are good scriptures are good okay and no opposition to female education and so woman can get educated so which meant our culture our religion not wrong this was the conclusion that they expected that she would make but do you know she rejected them very bold is she she found that these scriptures support gender injustice so she took a stand that hindu scriptures themselves are supportive of gender injustice so the idea that the scriptures are right and our practice is wrong is rejected this is similar to the stand which is taken by ambedkar later <coughs> okay then <coughs> she went back to pune and there uh, she founded arya mahila sabha in 1881 uh, this was to promote education among women and also discourage child marriage and she wrote stree dharma niti stree dharma niti meant morals for women in 1882 morals are modern morals asking women to marry by choice a woman should marry a person of his choice and not to marry early so in that sense she started the feminist discourse and she gave a testimony before the hunter commission set up in 1882 and uh, she said that we should have women teachers and women doctors oh, because in that way it contributes to women's education and uh, women are not going to male doctors because of which they have many health problems so uh, so he said she said that there should be women doctors and hunter was invited to attend a meeting of 280 ladies and uh, things she said before the commission 
for example she said in 99 cases out of 100 the educated men of this country 99 out of 100 educated men of this country are opposed to female education and the proper position of women if they observe the slightest fault they magnify the grain of mustard seed into a mountain and try to ruin the character of a woman what she said before the commission finally reached queen victoria okay uh, but when she was giving this testimony before the hunter commission seeking that there should be more doctor women doctors she herself planned to become a doctor okay and uh, before that she started learning english also she knew sanskrit and marathi before and she started learning english and next she went to uk and her book did well uh, with its proceeds in 1883 she went to england to study medicine okay but she found ineligible because of she had some deafness in one ear it was caused during famine so instead of medicine she joined a different college while at the same time teaching the languages of sanskrit and marathi and uh, one thing she did during her stay in in uh, uk and in the year 1883 itself was that she was converted to christianity and started signing her name mary rama so retaining her indian background her daughter too was converted she was exposed to christianity during her brahmo samaj days and in england she learned a lot about the work of the sisters where uh, some of them were involved um, in working even with uh, prostitutes even with prostitutes so where they she felt and uh, impressed and surprised by the service spirit service motto of sisters Uh, and she already was exposed so she didn't take much time to convert to christianity and about this she wrote later giving reasons why she did it only two things on which all those books dharma shastras sacred epics puranas modern poets the popular preachers of the present day orthodox high caste men all were agreed that women of high and low caste as a class were bad very bad worse than demons 
as unholy as untruth and they could not get moksha as men so what she means is that without any discrimination there is a consensus in hinduism past and present core scriptures are the additional ones non core that women are inferior and uh, no doubt this decision of her was a very important decision that would contribute to many problems and unpopularity but then she did it with a conviction medicine her christianity was not orthodox and dogmatic she was critical of christianity as usual here again like ambedkar though he took buddhism he didn't take buddhism as practiced by some people he in fact gave a completely new interpretation of buddhism so in the same way uh, rama bai did not take christianity uncritically for example in england she was arguing with something like the doctrine of trinity doctrine of trinity refers to those three uh, as gods jesus god and holy spirit and uh, she continued with indian dress remain vegetarian and then she argued that the crucifix need not have a latin inscription but it can be a sanskrit so uh, the anglican church which made her a christian did not like her questioning behavior they wanted her to have faith belief and follow follow everything not selectively but she said if i have to follow somebody's authority i could have followed it even before and uh, how can you criticize me just because i am a hmm, black woman and sisters there were critical of her mothering also she didn't like all those things so she was basically a woman of uh, very independent minded so very free a kind of a dissident wherever she is wherever she is okay so she had some problems with them in england and later she moved to us she went to the us in 1886 uh, on invitation 
to attend a graduation ceremony of her cousin who would be the first woman doctor from india uh, she wanted to stay in us only for few weeks but there uh, she got in touch with people many people and then she started giving lectures and lectures would uh, raise funds and uh, she developed the idea that she should start a widow home in india and uh, she wrote a book the high caste hindu woman in hindu woman in 1887 the high caste hindu woman okay so her criteria her prob her focus came to be about uh, the high caste because the higher caste would mean purer hinduism and more influence of sanskritic texts and more problems lower caste women had fewer problems okay and amazingly she wrote this book in english a language she learned only recently okay uh she interacted with the feminists there and also women who were freed from slavery and uh rama bai association in boston formed in 1887 pledging financial support to her widow home in india okay so it is here she evolved as a uh, full blown feminist thinker and uh, international figure international figure so the treatment she got in the us is much better than what she got in in uk and she got network of friends of sub and supporters this was taking place few years before vivekananda would become popular he became popular in 1893 so uh, with the support of her american friends she would be in a position to start a widow home and then back to india uh, she also worked on the people of united states this is a book she wrote in marathi published in 1889 so this shows that she enjoys writing and uh, she keeps her experience she she is very observant of experience observant and writes she conveys across cultures so she shared her impressions of united states and she found that india should emulate us somewhat opposite of what vivekananda would teach later so what did rama bai like in the us consciousness of rights and uh, prevalence of civil society
okay and when she liked free and modern america with thriving civil society and when she says that that is what india should be obviously she is seeking india which is free from colonialism and in 1889 sharada sadan was started in opened in bombay and later shifted to pune in 1889 This is a secular residential school for high caste widows. In 1899, she attended Congress meeting where there were out of 2,000 delegates, only three were women, and Rama Bai spoke. So this just shows the kind of female participation around that time. <coughs> okay but then uh rama bai started facing problems the problem was this people didn't like her cause of working for widows this they didn't they didn't dislike in fact it was reformers like ranade supported her okay but the moment she got converted to christianity problems started because indian nationalism was about how uh, we are great and how we are not inferior and our culture is not inferior so vivekananda style is what is approved by indian nationalist but then rama boy was exposing indian culture in front of the british the american the west and before the christianity okay did she try to propagate christianity no sharada sadan maintained neutrality meant that there would be scriptures hindu scriptures as well as christian scriptures so hindu widows began to read bible also but then rama bai was christian her daughter was christian and they would pray doors open and she was a kind of an ideal woman to the people so if she was christian and a great human being definitely it tempts people to think that christianity was more helpful and that is how many were taking to christianity and the press called it widows mission house and slowly social reformers dissociated themselves with this tilak was very critical and ranade also withdrew but only jyoti ba phule supported her if she, if it was not for christianity she would have got much more name but then she was not after name she was going by her convictions and uh, later uh, sharada sadan was shifted to few kilometers away from pune cut gone because of plague in the late 1890s and it came to be called mukti mission and mukti mission is much bigger than sharada sadan in pune 
over 2000 women took shelter in this mukti mission and uh, who used to stay in this it is not only uh, hindu widows but also famine victims during this famine uh, rama boy and her associates went, went to famine areas uh, bringing women on ox carts and all of them were brought to this though there was no proper accommodation no proper building and sexually assaulted women and all kinds of women uh, which meant uh, many dalits because dalits were more vulnerable than others okay and uh, uh, what did they do here they started many activities in fact uh, they built the house with their own hands they took the stone from that region only from that place only and uh, women did things like plowing building okay gardening and they even had printing press okay because rama bai believed in uh, self reliance and education is supposed to give this self reliance education and many activities training in many activities okay and it is not only that mukti mission conveyed brought some people who cannot do much work on their own for example blind and old women they were kept in separate sections and it came to be called kripa so this is like mother theresa's work mother theresa used to take many uh, destitutes why these dimensions are important is that i think all these activities may be um, may give may be conducive to uh, christianity rather than hinduism because within hinduism who did uh, social service particularly the work related to destitutes prostitutes <coughs> whereas christianity was familiar with these things so rama boy was going by um, humanism <coughs> and doing what she believed was right and then <clears throat> uh, in 1908 she embarked on translating bible into marathi okay and one amazing thing is there was a marathi version of bible before but that was more more sanskritic whereas rama bai wanted bible to be written in a language which is closer to a uh, poor or lower caste woman and for that she started learning hebrew and greek for to to understand bible in the original languages and then translate to marathi So finally she got to know seven languages 
in this way she is closer to one reformer ramon roy but why did how did she pick up this kind of linguistic skills but it is probably it was her uh, uh, father's training where uh, she was good at sanskrit grammar and she she was taught grammar in such a way uh, she knew the pattern of how languages are constituted so that is why she could pick up english very fast and now reading hebrew and greek and in 1919 uh, government awarded kaisare hind for her service to indian education and do you know her daughter went to accept the award because she was because her mama bai was sick but tragically her daughter died in 21 at the age of 40 before rama bai so this is the last death of a closed one and rama bai herself died in rough and mukti mission is active till today so very unusual and eventful life worthy of reflection thank you